Welcome to another Miami Corona Project conversation. Today, I'm thrilled to invite Renee Morales to uh, speak with us about this pandemic. Renee Morales is Director of Cultural Affairs and the Chief Curator at the Perez Art Museum Miami, where he has organized over 50 exhibitions. Morales has also spearheaded numerous major, ac major acquisitions for PAM's permanent collection, including a set of nearly 400 works from the Stackner Archive of Concrete and Visual Poetry, as well as over 50 works purchased through P PAM's Collector's Council. He has written essays for various publications, including cabinet and numerous exhibition catalogs. Morales is currently teaching museum history and theory curatorial practice at Florida International University. Prior to joining PAM, formerly the Miami Art Museum, Morales worked at the Museum of Art, Rhode Island School of Design. Morales, who grew up in Miami, received his BA from Swarthmore College and his MA in art history from Brown University. Hey, it's such a pleasure to have you here uh, speaking with us. Um, Renee, Likewise, Xavier. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. So, first of all, you know, we're here addressing the pandemic, you know, today, you know, mid-June uh, here in Miami, um, June 21st, I think. How are you doing? How has the pandemic impacted you um, personally and your, you know, just your community? How has, you know, just to capture this moment in time for Renee Morales, how has, how has this pandemic changed? Oh boy, um, how much time do you have? Let's see, uh, it's, a, it's a huge question, right? For me and literally for everyone on the planet from here to New Zealand to Iceland to Peru, everywhere. Um, yeah, it's been uh, just such an intense time and surreal, surreal times, very uncomfortable times. Um, you know, like many people, I have uh, folks in my orbit who are high risk. So it's just uh, been very, 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 very tense, uh, very stressful. Um, as far as my work with the museum, uh, you know, it's it's uh, obviously uh, the museum, like all um, all venues that rely uh, so strongly on visitors on visitation, it's been um, uh, it's been very, very uh, detrimental. Um, and, and we know that the museum had some serious uh, uh, issues, and so yeah, you had to close the museum now. Period. Right. That's what happened. Yeah. The museum generates yeah. its revenues, among other things, from ticket sales, and here no one's doing it. So there were some there were some serious consequences uh, financially uh, to the sure. museum. What is what is the role of a of a museum during a pandemic? Clearly, you have to protect the community, which is why you close your doors and you switch to other kinds of programming. But is there a broader a role a museum has in addressing a pandemic in a community? Um, well, I think, um, first of all, as you mentioned, we have uh, sort of pivoted to uh, other kinds of offerings, particularly online offerings, which we were very well positioned for, I have to say, much to uh, particularly yeah. Franklin's credit, the credit of Knight Foundation, uh, and other entities, um, you know, we have been gearing up uh, for a long time uh, to greatly, greatly amplify our our online presence. And yeah, I was, uh, I was looking for uh, your resume, your bio in the museum, and I was so thrilled to see it's literally just this very um, uh, accessible site with all sorts of videos and lectures and digital platforms. It's a very, very inviting site for you to navigate through it and. Uh, and participate, you know, to, to, to experience it. So you have to let you were able to pivot quickly as a museum had to shut its doors down. So I do I do see yeah. that uh, in your online class. Yeah, and um, you know, some of that material that we've been putting out, uh, a lot of it has been related to the pandemic. Um, you know, there's something about the pandemic that just makes you look at art in a different way, even artworks that you're very familiar with. Uh, many of them will take on new meanings or uh, new levels. Uh, because of a crisis so so global like this. Um, at the same time, um, you know, the pandemic is not the only thing that's been going on. Obviously, the last few weeks, there has been this very um, just incredible surge of um, energy and passion around uh, uh, the, uh, the, the protest movements. And there again, the museum, I think, um, largely because of our efforts with the digital outreach, um, ha, but has, has been very well positioned to address those, not just because of the digital efforts that we've been making um, more recently, but because 
just that's it's uh, those kinds of issues are deeply ingrained in our uh, institutional identity. These are things that we've been talking about forever. In fact, we have several works and exhibitions on view right now that speak to that moment and speak to those issues. So, um, yeah, I think that the museum can serve a very important role and cultural institutions in general can serve an important role uh, in this uh, new landscape, despite uh, the um, uh, despite the, the the sort of the physical separation that's involved. Um, you know, a museum is many things. It's not just a building, right? It's not just a facility. It's a, it's an institution. It's a it's it's a set of humans. It's um, it's a collection. Uh, it is an approach. It is a worldview, really. And um, this crisis has, I think, sharpened our own perceptions of those uh, those other dimensions to our institution. You know, uh, we love our building. Don't get me wrong; it's a gorgeous, gorgeous building, um, and we are looking forward to reopening it. Uh, starting next month, in fact, we're going to start um, we're opening up the outdoors. You know, we're a museum that's that's uh, blessed with a beautiful exterior, which we are going to start uh, making great use of uh, in this, the context of this pandemic. It will be a, a huge uh, boon, um, not just for the museum to have that, but also for the community. I think the 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 uh, the approach, right? The approach that the museum has in engaging community and looking at um, capturing, you know, I think uh, where a community is at a moment in time, um, at this particular moment, and maybe that's like more of an artist's role, like it's a curator's role, it's obviously, I think, a museum's role. But as we look at this moment in time and look at this pandemic, obviously we, we see the uh, convergence of a lot of different things that have um, been sort of working at margins but all of a sudden become you know the core of a conversation i i remember um when i was graduating law school there were the winwood disturbances and i was the chair of the city's gang task force and it happened in winwood because of police action five police officers killed a drug dealer in mercado inside a small building in winwood and winwood uh went to flame so i i remember that at, at that moment in time there were mayors in the streets trying to address the issues of uh, structural racis racism, police brutality, um, lack of access to justice. And, you know, fast forward, and this, I mean, that was just 91. We can take you to McDuffie in 1980. We can, we can go back, you know, 400 years. So that's been a, a conversation. The this latest one uh, with the murder of Floyd happened during a pandemic where most of the people who were mostly impacted were uh, people of color, because uh, again, because of structural racism, they don't have the privilege, you know, of of calling Instacart. Um, uh, and in some, you know, in some portions of our society, especially in those more marginalized neighborhoods. So, I just uh, wonder how, you know, you see an artist response, an artistic response, to this new paradigm, I think, where our society is looking as if they have new eyes um, to what's been in front of them all this time. In this case, um, uh, a pandemic um, that is exacerbated by climate change, um, the impact of those at society's margins who don't have access to the kind of protection that the rest of society does in addressing a pandemic, those same individuals leading the charge, but the rest of society joining to fight, uh, you know, for more equitable, more equitable society where there's equal justice. I'm just wondering at this at this moment in time how you think um, artists are responding. We have some examples of some ways some artists are responding to this moment. Some, I think, service catalysts are part of the conversation. Some are perhaps capturing it. But are there different dimensions, different, different, different levels of exploration? I think for artists. At this moment? Yeah. Well, let me just start by saying that I, you know, I completely agree with you, and uh, I, I also uh, have very much at uh, front and center of my mind 
uh, the point that you made about the intersection between the pandemic and uh, uh, communities of color and just how devastating uh, disproportionately uh, the, this, this has been um, in, for those communities. Um, and of course, as you know better than anyone, uh, climate change also uh, has a disproportionate effect on communities of color and uh, poorer nations around the country. Uh, around the world, I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, that that intersection of those three things, pandemic, uh, climate change, and um, <clears throat> uh, race and class is not accidental in, in, in any way, right? It's The three things are interrelated. And um, yeah, I think um, in some ways, I think the many people think of these issues uh, in separate boxes, right? Um, and certainly I think with um, the rise of the pandemic and the rise of the, the protest movement, um, in some ways uh, you could, I mean, I don't know if this is true, but uh, you could, uh, what one can be concerned uh, that issues of climate change are kind of uh, going by the wayside. Um, and certainly that efforts and funds uh, to address uh, climate change uh, might be stretched even further as, as scarce as they have been um, because of these other issues. But in fact, uh, I think that there's great uh, potential and I'm not, not by any means an expert on any of these questions, but um, that intersection, that coincidence, that, uh, that, that coinciding of those three vectors um, it would seem to offer some potential uh, for us to to really effectively hone our responses to all those things and try to sort of hit all three things at once. So I don't, you yeah. know, I don't know. You you, you can speak to this much yeah, much I more. Think, I think that's. I think there's where 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 an artist uh, perspective is so important. I I think that um, in all three, it requires one changing the way they think, reframing the way they think, looking at a different things from a different worldview. Uh, climate is um, traditionally been, <laughs> sadly, and sadly it still is actually, um, seen from the perspective of your ideology, not from the perspective of truth or the science, right? Depending on what camp you're on, you're gonna listen to that ideology and that's where we're now. Uh, there is dog whistling happening all over our nation today, even this morning um, uh, on the news about in in a rally that uh, the president was at, serious dog whistling to try to uh, diminish the value of the protests, to uh, try to create these false dichotomies. Uh, that's what's happening. And even in the pandemic, it's almost a, it's an act. Um, you know, it's it's almost an act of of, uh, of of it's a political act to wear or not wear a mask, right? It, it, so we're in a world where. <laughs> We're still seeing things from the, the framework of our, our own ideology as opposed to thinking holistically, thinking about how we are part in the context of community. I also think that uh, in society, part of the problem with climate change um, is greed. Um, the problem uh, with structural racism is also greed. I mean, there is an entire group of people that uh, have never, um, had their their necks without a foot on them, right? A whole race of people that have had that. So when we look at when we look at this at this pandemic, uh, all you have to look is at the at the TPP, and there were an entire sector of individuals that uh, corporations that received a lot of money. There's a lot of gig workers and individuals who don't, and there's many artists in this community who at this moment don't have um, a source of income. So when you look at all of these, it's about how how to you know sort of reframe who we are to one another, what we are in society, and what we take for granted or um, assume to be the truth uh, needs to be shut, shut shut a little bit. And I think that's where an artist can come in, uh, showing new ways of seeing. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. This moment in time during this pandemic. Um, I see museums, cultural institutions, artists, curators as being the vehicles, the agents of uh, of that new way of seeing. And I, uh, uh, I'm just wondering if you know, in the last three months, as you're, you know, sort of in this new world, uh, 
if you're seeing here in Miami some some artistic responses. I mean, I, I, I get it. Most people are focused on not getting sick and taking care of their finances. But are there other are there other are there other trends? And I think some of them you actually see visibly in the protest movement. But are, are, are there any things that you're seeing in Miami at this moment in time, how Miami artists are responding to this pandemic, responding to race? And we'll talk a little bit more about climate, but also responding to um, to climate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, 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 I haven't seen a lot of direct responses to the pandemic among artists, uh, but that's not to say it's not out there. I think there's, there's, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure it's out there. Um, and just art is, um, there's sometimes art takes a time and, and yes. takes some time and, um, you know, this whole thing is still new. And I think so many of us were just in shock. I, and I, you know, I'm not an artist, but I can imagine artists themselves, uh, had to go through the same kind of um, period of just processing a new reality that that I've been through and that my family has been through. Um, but um, as far as the uh, potential for um, art to step in, um, we'll talk about museums later and curators later, but for artists to step in, I feel like um, they could very well play just an incredibly important role here. Um, and you pointed earlier to how um, uh, I think you just very brief, briefly mentioned about how like science uh, and scientists uh, kind of are in their own lane mm -hmm. and, um, sure. you know, uh, often social justice folks are kind of in their own lane uh, and, and artists are often perceived to be in their own lane. But really artists have an incredible um, ability to um, reach into different um, disciplines and uh, bridge, create these kinds of bridges. Um, this is something I've always been interested in. In fact, I came through art via science. I was studying vision and perception uh, in, in undergraduate school when I started becoming really interested in some of the things that I was reading uh, that was coming from the direction of art. So, um, you know, something I've always been interested in, that, that relationship between art and science and being sort of a very uh, political person, someone who's always been uh, really engaged in um, and, and issues of social justice. I, I've always found those three th those three connective threads to be, uh, or the way that art can serve as a connective thread be between the, these things um, to be very, very important. And, um, you know, I've <clears throat> um, worked with artists who collaborate with scientists in the past. And I've always, you know, in the back of my mind thought, uh, you know, it's clear what art what we can get from the, the scientists, but it's, I've always had to sort of stop to think and I've, I've asked scientists like, what, what can art do for you? What can art do for science? Um, and it's an interesting question. And I've always been struck by how enthusiastic the response often is of like, there's so much that artists can do. Artists can communicate uh, with broad uh, publics and um, especially when you have the force of a museum behind them. Um, and um, I think for many scientists, they often feel a bit um, sort of boxed in by their own field and, and uh, they, they can use help uh, in bridging that kind of communication and really making use of, of not just the media, but the kinds of communicatory uh, avenues that art can open. Uh, yeah, again, think, this is something that you know better than than anyone with all of your collaborations with scientists. I think I think that that's true. The idea of the of the art um, uh, not not being in the service of science, um, but you know, so it's not it's not, it's not a botanical illustrator. I do I do believe that um, the the wisdom um, that resides in in an art practice and the wisdom that resides in a scientific practice can can converge and can and 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 can do good, a lot of good. I'm I'm interested in not just doing that, but also in inspiring new science with the art. And, and that is that is my life struggle, how to make sure that I do that. And part of the reason I think is is that that there are structures, there are ways of thinking, and it's hard to break the structures. So I'm actually on the committee of scientists at the Hubbard Park Experimental Forest, right? I'm the first artist to serve on the committee of people who manage the science done in, in an experimental forest. That's a new way of thinking. So I think that in time, um, um, these silos are going to, at the University of Miami, part of this interdisciplinary group, working with climate scientists and lawyers. So I, I, I know that there's an entire group of us 
working out to try to do that now. Although I think it's uh, it's it's more common to find the artist who sees science as their muse. I clearly do. I'm uh, always seeking uh, scientists to see art as their muse, who, who through our creative way of thinking, of analyzing, of perceiving things, can. Uh, bring in some creativity and imagination into their own practice. Uh, in fact, my meeting tomorrow with my University of Miami Ulink team is specifically on that. Everyone is growing away as a way of thinking. Um, but it, well, when, while we're on science, like let me just focus really quickly on on climate. Even though we, we you know, you were still about museums and curators. Um, but on the issue of science, um, what it's clear to me is that this, this pandemic has made us on a dime, on a dime, change behaviors. On a dime, no one got in a car. On a dime, um, you know, we literally reduced our carbon footprint. And we did so mostly out of fear, out of fear of contracting season buying. On a dime, the economy stopped. And the climate emergency that befalls us, you know, the warmest summer in recorded history. And if we look at the parts per million, we've gone 100 parts per million since the Industrial Revolution, when it normally takes 100 parts per million tens of thousands of years over the last 800,000 years. But the difference is, as you know, that it's not that we went from 200 to 300 as we vacillated over the last um, 200, 800,000 years. It's that in the last 160 years, vacillated 100 parts per million, but not between 200 and 300, but we've never been above 300. And in this, in this 160 years, we have now gone up another 100 parts per million to the place where humans have never been. And that kind of, that kind of temperature change has never happened. The kind of famine and war and hunger and sea level rise and destruction of ecosystems is upon us. And of course, weakened nature heightens pandemics because all of a sudden wilderness that had not come in contact with humans is in contact with humans and they're all weakened. The ecosystem is weakened, the animal is weakened, more susceptible to get infected. And at this moment in time, when we have for those who are sort of crazy climate crisis with sea level rise and ecosystem collapse. We also have more pandemics. And, uh, and what I fear is that we're going to come out of this pandemic learning that we can, on a dime, literally on a dime, change our behavior, on a dime, um, rethink what's important. That we're going to go back to business as usual the second we have a vaccine. And that climate is gonna be on the back burner because now everything is about a post 9-11 TSA moment where now we just need to, you know, make sure that everyone gets screened, right? Like the whole the whole shift of how we think about society. So now it's all about pandemics and the thing that's is gonna be put in the back burner. And, yeah. and you know, artists, uh, society has a role to, to point out with, with incredible, what's in front of us with incredible clarity that we choose to ignore. And it's tantamount to a kid driving a car and texting and having a near miss and not getting into a car accident. Well, right? He could have died, it could have been a fatal accident because he was doing something wrong. But because he didn't die, because we now have a vaccine, you continue driving and two minutes later, you're texting again. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I fear is happening. Europe, is coming out of this vaccine, doubling down on green energy. China, this vaccine, sorry. China's coming out of this pandemic and they're building the whole uh, lines. The US is still in this pandemic and all we do is completely deregulate the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Endangered Species Act and doubling down on fossil fuels. So there needs to be a new way of seeing and uh, and I know that politics hasn't done it. Maybe these protests will, but I'm afraid of more polarization. I'm not sure what the final outcome of these protests are gonna be, especially when you suppress voters. So I'm looking at, is there a role for art in this discussion when, when the stakes could not 
be higher. Forgetting pandemics, climate alone, the stakes could not be higher. Uh, and and that's why I'm asking you. You know, you sit here, the curator of this museum at the at the global, the globalist of global cities, right? You know, you may have Singapore, you may have Dubai. Miami is the city of the future. It's a global city at this hemisphere. Clearly, from an art perspective, it's you know, you know, it's a clear international um, center for for art. Uh, one of the big hubs of art, and it's also the city that's most vulnerable to the climate crisis. But also, from a demographic point of view, it's a really diverse city. And I'm just wondering what what a petri dish uh, to do something about it. What a petri dish to look at these three things that. Now, Miami, a city of riots, Miami, a city of sea level rise, Miami, a city that is at the edge of the tropics so that the vectors of disease, all the tropical diseases from dengue fever to Zika, are going to be landing at our doorstep as temperatures rise because that's all they do because we keep on pumping carbon into the atmosphere. What can a Miami school of artists look like? What mm -hmm. is the Miami voice? And because we know how um, difficult it is for artists to advance their voices, there's a whole um, backdrop to that, whether it's galleries or curators or museums, what can those institutions that support them do so that a conversation like this can happen so that artists can help us lead the way to reframe things? That to me is one of the silver linings that can come out of this crazy moment we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. I agree with everything you said. Let me unpack that uh, uh, at least parts of that a little bit. Um, first of all, um, yes, I agree that uh, you know, on one hand, this uh, crisis, the pandemic crisis, has uh, really made uh, people uh, see the world differently and very, very, very quickly. Uh, and I agree also that sadly uh, we can uh, I can I can see humanity sort of pivoting back and just very quickly forgetting those uh, lessons. Um, but maybe I'm just uh, overly optimistic, but I think that that pivoting back uh, will will be temporary. I think that once uh, minds are open, they remain. Uh, open once a new paradigm has been introduced that new paradigm is not going to go anywhere um, I think that um, this crisis has um, you know if there if there's any silver lining to this it's it's um, it, it sort of encouraged us to envision the world otherwise uh, to quote a, a friend of mine who um, uh, recently made this point um, and art, of course, uh, is all about that, right? Art is all about uh, trying to envision the world otherwise. Um, good art is, is like that. Um, so art can continue to play a very important role uh, in continuing um, that kind of change and paradigm shift. Um, and that's sort of a kind of a new realism, I would say, uh, that, that, that uh, attended this crisis when it first happened. Um, and, um, you know, of course, there are many different ways for art to do this. Um, there's art that is uh, directly about uh, uh, the, 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 the crisis um, that, uh, that literally depicts the crisis and that literally speaks as words about the crisis. Um, but there are, um, I don't know, I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of a New York based uh, conceptual artist named Lucio Pozzi. And this story about how um, during uh, the attacks of 2001, uh, which occurred very, very near his studio, um, it, while they were happening, he made a drawing uh, and just photocopied it over and over and over and over again, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So it wasn't even the drawing so much. It was this the gesture, the performance, not the performance, but the gesture that was really the artwork. Um, and it was a direct response to what was happening, even though it's not um, necessarily, you know, in a literal way manifested in the in in the artwork. So I mean, art can art can address uh, these kinds of new new paradigms in in different ways, uh, sometimes in indirect ways that are that can be 
just as powerful. Um, and I, I think that that is happening with this crisis. I can see a lot of artists, uh, I mean, for starters, um, this has uh, exacerbated the, art, the artist's life, right? In some ways, um, not all artists, uh, certainly artists engaged in social practice like yourself uh, is all about being out in the world and having the kind of social interaction. Um, but uh, many artists uh, actually became artists because of the, they, they draw their energy from being alone and being alone with their work. Um, and um, I know you do as well. You have that, 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 those two sides of your practice. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that um, this crisis will no doubt create uh, it, it will no doubt be very fertile, I think, for artists uh, in the long run. Um, it, and, um, you know, I, I work for a museum, I'm a curator, and I'm a real, like, museum curator. And, you know, museums, we're on a sort of a different time scale. We're on the kind of geological time scale, uh, like a glacial time scale. So, sorry? Except there's this sense of, I mean, that's, I have that tension, too, because I do, I do a lot of that, um, gestural stuff in fact uh, my diary keeping of how many deaths mm -hmm. have happened is very much about me and I'm, I'm just trying to reflect and capture and every time sure. i put a stroke down i think of another family who's just lost a loved one mm -hmm. um and to me um I, I lost my dad this year so um uh, every time i do that i just relive that death as i do that and, and i know that there's all these families that have um not had the opportunity to say goodbye so i i i see that and i and i and i and i and i embrace in fact i have i have never been more alone thank god i live with my husband but i have not left this house you know so i have been very focused and i have been uh but the the point i'm trying to make is that there's also this incredible sense of urgency especially when it comes to um, the issue of the climate crisis. It, you know, we are literally at the precipice of catastrophe. So I, I am in a hurry. And although I clearly understand and embrace art for art's sake, to me, art has a job to do. And man, we're running really far behind. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and most of my art actually is slow activism, right? So it's about trying to change the way people, you know, so it's not, it's not activist art, uh, which maybe is the direction I need to run to. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that I understand that institutionally, geological time is important because what we try to do, you know, is look how other pandemics, other plagues, other people um, uh, responded, how other artists, how whole ways of thinking um, happened. And I think art literally is, is how humanity responds to all of those factors. So I get the I get the, the institutional role. I just wish there was a catalyst uh, for artists at a time of such uncertainty that would say, you know what, this is a, this is a really a good direction uh, for you to unleash your creativity and your passion. You know, and I mm -hmm. I just I just see that I just see that speaking sometimes it feels like I'm speaking to a void because there's these other structures that. Um, serve to, to um, um, that serve artists, you know, that that sort of point artists in a different in a different direction that has more to do with the traditional practice. So I am caught in this in this claustrophobic space, and I look at a situation like this, and I the same way we want to break silos and want to break uh, ways of thinking. I want to sort of break artist ways of artisting, you know, because I mm -hmm. think. That so there's so much there's so much to gain there's so much to gain at the individual level as a, as a from a, as a creative person but also for society to gain from the work we do so i, yeah, I just absolutely yeah. speaking to you right because you're you're the in many ways the the you know you're, we're kindred souls here but you're the gatekeeper of the institution you know in many ways you 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 help set the tone for for what artists uh you know what artists you know um, what the art world you know feels is relevant uh and i think that it's a it's a struggle because you know there's different timelines and different uh priorities but a moment like this one i think we shifts priorities we shifts what's important you know and that's that's what i'm 
Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I think everything, um, this this, uh, this idea of a paradigm shift um, has been just as uh, strongly felt uh, in the museum world as, as it has been anywhere. I think uh, so strongly felt that many of us are just still trying to process it and, and understand. Um, uh, it's it's parameters, but also understanding what how can what what can we do with this? How can we harness this? And yeah. How can we we envision not just the world uh, otherwise, but how can we envision museums otherwise? How can we, we envision art otherwise? Um, and um, yeah, yeah, I, I think um, uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, you know what directions art takes us in uh, in response. Well, having you at the helm of our uh, our awesome and great museum here in Miami, um, I can't wait to see what uh, you and, and the entire team there do uh, with our community of artists. I know this is that this pandemic is nowhere near over. In fact, sitting here with you, it's the 21st of June, I think, on the 21st of June, um, we know that we are having record cases. We may become the next hotspot. Miami may have not begin, have begun to have seen the worst yet. Um, and we have suffered a lot, you know, as a society, as a community, a community that's so dependent on tourism. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. And I just, um, I know that the, the museum has a big, big role uh, to fill. I also know that there's a community of artists out there who also have a huge, huge role to fill at this moment in time. And, um, and just uh, let's, let's work and walk, let's walk together to see how we uh, how we move through this pandemic, through this cl climate crisis that is unrelenting, and uh, of course through what has been institutional uh, structural racism since uh, time immemorial. How we begin mm -hmm. to, to change those things, and I, I do I do like you uh, think that art can show us the way. So thank you so much for everything you do, Renee. So appreciate. Thank it. you. Yeah, and you know of course we are. Um, it's it's become. Uh, I, I hope it hasn't become a cliche, uh, but but it's become so common to point out how we are truly in this all in this together, and even alone we are uh, we are alone together. Um, we are united uh, apart. So um, thank you, Xavier. Yeah, sure, it's great. Stay safe, stay healthy. You too. You too. Be well. Be careful out there. Um, it's. Uh, yeah, things have not been moving in the right direction, unfortunately, in our neck of the woods here. So uh, it's uh, it's very tense times indeed. But um, you know, uh, we'll we'll get through it. We'll get through it together. Thanks. Thank you.